Hello, welcome to electricalfereview.com. In today's video, we're going to talk about transient response. Specifically, we're going to do an example in an RC circuit. An RC circuit is a circuit made of resistors and capacitors. So as you can see, we have three resistors right here and one capacitor. So we're asked to find an expression for the transient response for the voltage across the capacitor, Vc of t. In order to do so, we have to consider this circuit at different times. Three times specifically. One time before the switch has been closed, meaning when T is less than zero, when the switch is still open. Second, when the switch has been closed, when T is greater than zero. And lastly, at T equals infinity, when the switch has been closed for a very long time. So let's start by talking about how this system is going to respond before the switch has been closed or when T is less than zero. When t is less than zero, our switch is open. As it says, assuming the switch has been open for a very long time before it's closed at t equals zero. It says that in the problem description. So at t less than zero, since the switch has been open, our capacitor is going to act as an open circuit. So at, when the switch is open, capacitors act as open circuits and inductors act as short circuits. So simply, we can replace this capacitor right here with an open circuit. Also, we know that since the switch has not been closed, these two wires here are not connected. And these two kilo ohms can simply be removed at t less than zero. So we're going to redraw the circuit for time less than zero. And this is how our circuit will look like. So as you can see, we open the capacitor and remove the 2k ohm resistor. So we're left with the other 1k ohm resistor and the other 2k ohm resistor. And VCFT, voltage across the capacitor, is simply just going to be voltage across the 2 kilo ohm resistor. So notice that this is when T is less than zero or when the switch has not been closed yet. So let's go ahead and find VCFT at T less than zero. What is VCFT? VCFT can simply be found by using a simple voltage division in this circuit. So VCFT is going to be 9 volts multiplied by 2 kilo ohm resistor all divided by 1 kilo ohm resistor plus 2 kilo ohm resistor. We can close the parentheses and as a result VCFT is going to be 9 volts multiplied by 2 divided by 3 is just going to be constant. See the ohms cancel each other out. And VCFT is going to be 6 volts. So this is the case when time is less than 0. This will help us to find the transient response. Since the transient response we know is the response when a change in the circuit happens. So once we connect the switch, then our response will change and that is our transient response. However, this 6 volt right here is the voltage across the capacitor before the switch has been placed, meaning the capacitor is fully charged and has a 6 volt across that open circuit node. Now, let's go ahead and write a general expression for the transient response in an RC circuit. So let's go back here and we found that VCFT for time less than 0 was 6 volts. And this is very important to note since we're going to use that in our transient response equation. And our transient response, which I denoted by Vc of t, is going to have a form of k1 e to the power of minus t over tau. And tau is a time constant here. And tau in an RC circuit is found using the formula R multiplied by C, the value of the resistor multiplied by the value of the capacitor. Since we only have one capacitor here, we can simply use the value of that single capacitor. However, since we have three different resistors in this circuit, we have to find the R equivalent or R thevenin in the whole circuit and use that R to find tau or the time constant. And time constant, just to be clear, is how much time it takes for the capacitor to fully charge or discharge. It takes five time constants for the capacitor to do that. So we talked about what tau is. So the next expression that we need to find the value of is k1. k1 is going to be a constant, but what is that constant and where do we get that? 
k1 is the steady state value of our signal minus the value of our signal at time equals zero this is very important vc at infinity is means that when the switch has been closed for a very long time the value of vc at that time minus vc at zero it means the instant when the switch closes that might sound a little confusing right now since we have to find two different parameters which we might not be very familiar with but let's take a closer look at this we already found vc at zero or we'd better say that we found vc when t is less than zero let's go back to that for a second right here when we found vc of t to be six volt for t less than zero so let's write it like this vc at zero minus is six volts since zero minus means the moment or the instant before zero it's six volt since t is less than zero this expression makes sense and we know that the voltage across the capacitor does not change instantaneously so the instant before zero and the instant after zero is going to have the same exact value so vc zero minus is going to be the exact value at vc zero plus and they're both going to be six volt this helps us a lot in finding the transient response since we know at the instant before and after zero our voltage across the capacitor is six volt so it's very important to note that the voltage across the capacitor does not change instantaneously so vc0 minus is the same as vc0 plus which in this case we found to be six volts so now let's go back to the expression for the transient response and see if we can find k1 so as i mentioned vc at zero which is the exact same thing as vc0 minus and vc0 plus meaning the instant before and after time equals zero is six volts let's go ahead and write that down vc at zero is six volts we found that earlier and vc at infinity how would we find that vc at infinity is a steady state response of our circuit meaning the switch has been closed for a very long time and our capacitor is back to an open circuit and it is fully charged so let's go ahead and replace this circuit with our steady state response equivalent meaning our capacitor will again be open circuit and the difference is that this time this switch is closed instead of open so this 2k ohm resistor is definitely going to be taken into consideration since this switch is closed and the 2k ohm resistor does exist let's go ahead and take a look at that so this is how our circuit will look like at t equals infinity or steady state response Let's find VC of T in this case. This shouldn't be that hard to find since we can again do a simple voltage division and find VC of T. So first we can combine this two k ohm resistor with this two k ohm resistor since they are in parallel with each other. We know the parallel of two k ohm resistor with two k ohm resistor is simply going to be the multiplication of them divided by the addition of these two. So two k ohms plus 2k ohms and this is going to give you the value of 1k ohm as the equivalent of these two resistors now a simple voltage division here which is going to find us vc of t so vc of t is going to be 9 volts multiplied by the 1k ohm resistor which is the equivalent of these 2k ohm resistors in parallel with each other divided by the 1k ohm resistor plus this 1k ohm resistor since they're in series we can do a voltage division and if we go ahead and find this our vc of t is going to be 9 volts times 1 half or 4.5 volts and this is at t equals infinity so after a switch has been closed for a very long time our vc of t is 4.5 volts now that we found this value we can go ahead and find our constant k1 so we just found that vc at infinity is 4.5 volts now k1 is going to be vc at infinity which is 4.5 volts we just found that minus vc at zero which we found to be six volts so by doing this k1 is going to be minus 1.5 so now that we found k1 
The only thing that we need to find in order to find the transient response of the voltage across this capacitor is tau. Let's go ahead and see how we can find tau. So in order to find tau, we're going to look at the circuit again at times equal infinity, meaning at the steady state response. So meaning the switch has been closed for a very long time and the capacitor is going to be an open circuit again. So let's go ahead and redraw the circuit one more time. So the circuit will look like this. This is the same circuit that we talked about previously for the steady state response, meaning at t equals infinity. So previously we saw that our capacitor had a value of 0.1 microfarads and there was only one capacitor so we only use this one in the formula for tau and now we need to find the r equivalent or r thevenin in this circuit in order to find the r thevenin since there's no dependent voltage or current source in this circuit we can go ahead and simply short the voltage sources and open the current sources i'm going to write that down so in order to do that r thevenin we short voltage sources and open the current sources this is very important to note this is how you find r thevenin in a circuit with no dependent sources so if you go ahead and do that we're left with this as our circuit as you can see we simply shorted that voltage source now it is very clear that all these resistors are in parallel with each other since they share the same node on the top and the same node on the bottom. So our R equivalent is going to be 2K ohm in parallel with the other 2K ohm in parallel with the one kilo ohm. Let's go ahead and find this value. Previously we found the 2K ohm in parallel with the other 2K ohm is going to give you one K ohm as a result. So our equivalent is going to be one kilo ohm in parallel with the other one kilo ohm and we can find our equivalent to be one kilo ohm multiplied by one kilo ohm divided by the addition of them this is the formula on how to find parallel resistors equivalent so one kilo ohm times one kilo ohm gives you one kilo ohm squared and one kilo ohm plus one kilo ohm gives you two kilo ohms simply our equivalent is 0.5 kilo ohm so now we can find tau or our time constant which is found using the formula r times c as i mentioned we use r as the r equivalent that we just found so 0.5 kilo ohm multiplied by rc rc had a value of 0.1 microfarads and if you do this multiplication our tau becomes phi times 10 to the negative fifth seconds. So five times this amount is how much is gonna take our capacitor to charge fully or discharge fully. So now that we found tau, let's go ahead and substitute all the values that we found into our final equation for the transient response. So let's go ahead and substitute tau and K1 back into our transient response for VC. K1 was minus 1.5. Then we have e to the minus t divided by 5 times 10 to the negative 5. And this is in volts. And this is how you find the transient response for voltage across a capacitor in an RC circuit. It's good to know that if you wanted a complete response of the voltage across this capacitor, you would just add the steady state response to this transient response. And we previously found the steady state response, which was Vc at infinity, to be 4.5 so you would just add that to this so let's go ahead and recap for a little bit on this we knew that at time previous to zero this switch was open meaning the capacitor was open circuited right at zero we switched the close back in and our capacitor starts to become discharged and we know that this charging process is not going to happen instantaneously that's why we noted that Vc at zero minus is the same as Vc at zero plus. So we found Vc at zero minus and we equal that to be the same as Vc at zero plus. In this case, it was six volts. Then we found the steady state response, meaning at time equal infinity, the switch is closed and the capacitor is back in open circuit mode. And we found the Vc at infinity once again. So our K1 was 
found using the VCL infinity and VCL zero, which we found to be negative 1.5. And then lastly, we found the R equivalent in the circuit at time equals infinity and the C equivalent. However, we only had one C, so we didn't have to find the C equivalent. And our tau was found using multiplying R times C, which gave us this value. So our final transient response is found like this.